to our gorgeous Iron Pro community. I am Charlie Brooks and welcome to this month's Q&A. This month I have got the gorgeous Brett Tucker. He is um, an actor who I worked with on a Channel 5 series called Lie With Me not that long ago and that was a fun experience and he's going to talk to us all about his acting career and um, life outside of acting as well. So let me bring him in. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? So good. good. So good to see you. Yeah, yeah. You doing well? I'm doing okay. I'm I'm doing very well, thanks. I'm sitting here in um, sunny California, so I can't complain. Just got back from a trip to the motherland in Australia and New yeah. Zealand. So, uh, yeah, doing well. Doing well. Thanks. It's been a, it's been a while since I saw you in, and I. Do you know what? I miss Melbourne. I missed Australia. I really left a little piece of my heart there. Yeah, it was a really it was a really good time, wasn't it? And under yeah. under difficult circumstances over a long period of time, and and the best part of that project, which is you know often the case, was the was the people, right? The connections we made, and it was really sweet. Yeah, yeah, it was a good time. Yeah, it was amazing. And obviously, for me, getting to fly all the way over there to do some work was just incredible. And see, it's bit always more. exciting and romantic. Trust Although it can go know. either way. It can go either way. Sometimes it's great and sometimes it's like I just want to go home. Yeah. But well, I'm, I'm right. about to embark on a, on a tour for the next six months. Oh, where? With the National Theatre. Or UK and Ireland. Wow. It's been a while since I toured, but um, I'm sure it's going to be wonderful and splendid. I actually have never had a bad experience, touch wood. Oh, God, I need wood. Um, you know, the people you need have a always... PA? Pardon? Do you need a PA? I've never been to Ireland. Do you want to come? Sure. <laughs> yes. So we'll have Phoebe, who was also in the show in London. Brett, right, you can right. go to my PA and then we'll all just hang out. It makes perfect sense. <laughs> right. But we're here to talk about acting because um, that's okay. what the platform is all about. So my uh -huh. first question to you, Mr. Brett Tucker, is why acting? Uh, where did it start? Where did your journey begin? Yeah, it, it was definitely a weird one for me in, in some ways. And uh, it, it's kind of a long story. I'll try to give you the truncated version. But um, but I grew up in a really small country town, 2,000 people in Australia in the mountains. And so there wasn't really anything around like that. But I did, you know, I we had a town hall that played movies on the weekends, the one movie, and I'd go and, and I just fell in love with that. I saw Oliver Twist when I was seven and I just remember being absolutely enthralled by the magic of it. And even like things like Spielberg movies, you know, I, I just remember thinking, and I'd go and watch the same movie all weekend, no matter what it was. My mate's mum ran the Civic Centre, so I, we would go and just watch the same movie. So there was something about it for me that, just that, that the, not just the magic of it, but the way that it made me, I, I made me feel less alone somehow. Like yeah. I, I, I kind of wanted to know the actors. I wanted to write to them, you know. And I, I remember seeing the kid that was in um, Oliver Twist walking around the town. I was like, oh my god, you know. It was so it was just an instant thing, and and it was odd in terms of there wasn't really anything like that in my family or or, or anyone other than school theater, you know, school plays. There wasn't. But I knew what I wanted to do from a really young age. It doesn't mean that uh, that I did not go out and get it straight away. I did do a lot of school theatre like I played Joseph in grade six and then I, I remember I actually my first acting gig was Joseph in grade yeah. six and at, at the end of year you know I was graduating from primary school and I went up into the tree before the play to get plums to throw at the girls and I <laughs> fell out of the tree and broke my arm and that um, is what karma. but the show went on I went on with a broken arm with your technique on a tree and go did, did you That's have it. to say Give me my colored coat. All of that. I'm not going to say exactly, that. exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, so that was that was that was where it all started from. But it was really it was a difficult journey in terms of I just didn't know what to do. And it was like I said, it was a very small town. There wasn't anything like that. Even in high school, I remember doing the high school plays and and, and you know and being and being into it, just being committed to it and and not mm. bad at it. And uh, and talking to the teacher and saying I think this is what I want to do. And mm. she was like, no. <laughs> no, you, 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 you know, you'd be a teacher. You could That's go and study cool. to be a Yeah, but that because just not even the drama, you know, and then going to the careers guy and saying the same thing and they're starting to look at the schools that were, you know, in different states. And it was so, for me, it felt very unattainable for a long time, even though I knew that's what I wanted to do. And I talked yeah. to a lot of actors and a lot of friends and 
it, it comes later for some people, but for me, it was extremely young. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I was live. I was a very sort of, um, you know, a daydreamer and creative and always, you know, living in my own kind of head. And, and so it was always, I was just sort of born that way. I mean, I don't know if it's what nature versus nurture, but certainly no one else in the family was, was from, from an acting or, or entertainment background. So there was never a plan B for you. So my my plan B was um, I played Australian rules. I played Australian rules football as well, and my brother was played professionally. And so I, I, you know, I, 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 that was the only thing I was other thing I was good at. Oh, I wasn't bad at writing. So I I was sort of, you know, I I got to the end of high school and I didn't know what I knew what I wanted to, but I didn't know what I was going to do because apparently acting wasn't going to happen, and I didn't have the money either to go to a big school or and they didn't take people until you're sort of twenty twenty one. So. I got into university and I was I was in the arts and I thought I'm going to eventually follow maybe a journalism career, but right. I I just deferred I deferred and played Australian rules football for a year and this is a really good uh, maybe it's a good story I think it's a good it's a defining moment anyway I okay. I, I worked I worked in the bank I got a okay. job <laughs> I got a job in the bank now nothing against people who work in the bank but it wasn't for me but it was so it was the best and worst thing I could have done because. I hated it so much, you know. I just it wasn't, and 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 the manager hated me, but I got along with the, the staff at the manager because I was always singing and dancing and mucking around, you know. And then one of the women one day said to me, "The I, I was quite young, you know." She said, "Why you should be an actor?" And I was like, "Well, that's you know." And she funny you should mention. She goes, "Well, we go to this theatre, this amateur theatre down towards the Big Smoke, because this was in the mountains, you know. It was half an hour closer to the city, but it was always packed. They had those, you know." They had a really low, a strong local kind of subscription, and there was never an empty seat. So I went and auditioned for a play that they just happened to be auditioning right, you know, the week that she mentioned this, and I started doing amateur theatre, and and that was that's a big deal, you know what I mean? Because you've got to be, regardless of what level you're doing it at, you've just got to be doing it. I think, mm-hmm. you know, and that's that's the trick. Is it's so hard? It's such a the industry is such a catch twenty two. You know, like you can't get a SAG union card without doing a job. You can't do a job. You know, it's, it's, it's these constant kind of uh, uh, catch twenty twos in the industry. You know, you can't get work without getting what you need work to get work. And uh-huh. so that 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 thing for me at least, I never had any kind of moment where it was like, oh, this is a a big job. Or it was just little bits and little bits and little bits and doing theatre. And then an agent came, and then I thought, and then I started auditioning for things, and I and I. I really felt like I was guessing. So then I went and did three years of drama school in Melbourne. That was that was initially a part time course in the first year because I needed to work to pay to pay for it. And, and and so it was. Yeah, for me, it was just getting the ball rolling by doing some theatre, you know, and and uh, and just being around people that are doing it, regardless of what level it's on. Yeah, thank God for the bank. Right. Yeah, that's right. Thank God for the bank. And it bought me my first new, my first car. So I got a car. I played another year of football. And Amazing. then uh, and then I left and, and worked in a video store and started acting in uh, amateur theatre. I worked in a video store for so long. My dad used to run a video store when I was a little girl. I used to tear down all the posters. Right. <laughs> um, but isn't it amazing how, like, those beautiful little synchronicities that happen in yeah. life... You so happened to be casting, but you were yeah. awake and you had a passion and a drive and you knew exactly what you wanted to do and you took action and you followed yeah. that. And that yeah. has led you to have a quite extensive career as an actor, I'd say. So, you know, I've got another crazy story. Do you want to hear it quickly? Yes, 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 yes. yes. You sure? All right, all right. So <laughs> I, when I was, so when I was, um, when I was going to that civic centre, in, in Warburton, that little town hall, I saw a movie. I'd go and see it. And there was a movie, an Australian movie called Starstruck. And this was in the 80s. And it had a soundtrack. It was a musical. Baz Luhrmann was actually in it as an actor. He'd gone through night. And now no one knew who Baz Luhrmann was then. And I certainly mm-hmm. didn't either. But it was an Australian movie. And there was this woman in it who was the lead called Joe Kennedy. And I was instantly kind of smitten with her, of course. And then I actually, this is kind of contrary to what I was saying before, because I found out, and I was really young, I found out that she had, in fact, grown up in the mountains where I live. And I was, it always blew my mind that someone from work, because I was very like, oh, I couldn't be an actor because I'm from this part of the world. And, you know, it's too hard. You have to be from the city. Like, that was ridiculous in hindsight, but that was, you know, how I thought. So when I found out this woman had grown up 
in the area, I, I was I had to find out where she lived, and it turned out her dad had been the principal of the high school. I looked them up in the phone book, and I walked to their house. So I'm like ten years old, I think maybe yeah. And I knocked on the door, and 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 they answered, and I was like, "Is this <laughs> Joe Kennedy's house?" And they said, "She doesn't live anymore." But yeah, it is. We're her parents. We'll call, we'll, get, we'll get her to give you a call. That was so sweet. We'll get her to give you a call when she um when she gets back to town. And she did. She called me. So I, I go and walk to her house again and I meet her and then we talk and she's, you know, it was, it, it was mind blowing. It was such a big deal. Anyway, her brother was in film school in Swinburne in the city and he put me in his short film. So actually I was in a short film when I was really young and I was probably terrible, but I still have a photo from it. Mm. So I lose contact with Joe over the years. And then, you know, I was getting back to the video. I do the video store. I never, I didn't see Joe again, you know, and she didn't really act again as far as I knew. And then I was, when I finally got out of drama school and I was working in bars and video stores and I started auditioning and I'm getting little bits. And I got a, I got a film, my first film, I was 25 at this point. So this mm-hmm. is yeah, 15 years after meeting Joe. And she was the dramaturg on the film for the kids. No way. My first film, and I was like, Joe, do you remember me? Isn't that um, crazy? That's crazy. I'm just, I can't get over that as a 10 year old little boy. You like pounded the streets and went to find Joe. Yeah. Like, yeah. In the country. So I was just walking along the, you know, the valley road for kilometers to go to this house. Yeah. It was Amazing. wild. Yeah. It was a cool story. But seeing her again after all those years, and it was, it was, it was like full circle. It was really cool. So when uh, your drama school is the National Theatre in Australia, right? Mm hmm. And how was that experience for you? It was great. And I, 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 so it was a mix, actually, but mostly great. Um, and it was the best thing I could have done because, I, like I said, I did feel like I was guessing. And it gave me the confidence overall to know that, okay, yeah. And that's why I went. I went to find out. I didn't go to – but the, the first year they have a unique situation where they have a ton of people. They have 40 people. Uh, mm. two different classes of 20. So that's a massive class. And then they that's how they get their money, really. And they colour it to 15 and then to 10 for the third year. The first year I hid in the corner for just about all of it. And every day I was like, I'm not coming back tomorrow. I'm not, I just didn't feel like I fit in. And, you know, I was standing there with my arms folded a lot, like just trying mm-hmm. to, you know, six foot two, trying to hide in the corner. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember the movement, movement teacher coming up to me and standing in front of me like this and going, you know, like sort of thought I was kind of being really aloof, but actually I was just terrified. Yeah. And um, and um, and so that so that I managed to get through the and there was a lot of personalities and people are trying to stand out in first year and it's very competitive. So I did a lot of hiding until the play at the end of the year, and then I and I I sort of knew what I was doing as I'd done some theatre. So I did okay in the play and it got me through to second year. And then the second year when it was reduced, I started to learn. And I'd gone there to find out, like I said, to find out if I could do it. Like, do I have a future? Not so much, you know, I'm going to be the best actor. I just needed to know if I should continue down this path. And 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 second year came around and I really started to get into the meat of it and get it and 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 started to really love the work in the school. And it and it and it did, it gave me exactly what I wanted to know, which was, yeah, I reckon I can make a go of this. Mm. So and, and and also that school, you know, that school didn't. It, it, you know, it, we learn about all of the different techniques. You know, there wasn't any one particular Meisner or Stanislavski. We, we learn all that stuff. It was about a tool bag, a tool kit, and about different tools for different types of projects. So there's so much, you know, especially in theatre, there's so many different styles of writing and different periods, and you need different tools for different pieces, you know, um, whether it's, you know, Meisner-based or, you know, it doesn't really matter. There was, so it was great in that sense. I got a lot of different tools out of it. I, I don't think I've ever heard of a drama school that so brutally, like, culls people as you go. I thought, because over here, yeah. once you're, you're in for the three years, and that's it. I know, that's you... so much better. <laughs> so much more I, I, I can't believe that. They're like, not good yeah. enough. No. I wow. know. I know. I was listening oh, to a podcast with um, John Bernthal, and uh, he, went to, he went to a Russian drama school, and they were just booting people out. Everyone's on standby the whole time. Like you're just working on a knife's edge. It's like but, um, yeah. Yeah. Like, ah! Well, well, this was a year to year base. So I, I and I, I think you're right, especially getting through to second year and then not yeah. getting through like putting two years in and then not making the year three. That's yeah. that's tough. Yeah. 
So luckily I, I scraped through. Yeah, well done. Can I ask you something? So you've done, um, you live in LA. You've lived in LA. I know you're about to move back to Australia, but you've lived there for quite a while. And I'm mm. often talking about the Americans and the way that they do it because they mm. they have quite a good um, uh, work ethos where they, they continue the work on their craft. They take class, they go to acting classes. Mm. Was mm. that is that something that you do? Is is that true? Speaking to somebody that's been in LA amongst all mm. of that stuff for the last 10 years or whatever it is that you've been there? Yeah, it is true. Definitely. And um, and I didn't really understand it either when I first got here, you know, but then it all started to make sense. And I think the the approach that it's difficult also here because the um the the class kind of uh, industry is it it's almost an industry unto itself separate from the industry. So you have to be very discerning and careful who you want to who you want to coach with. In my experience, you know you really got to find someone that works for you and also has you know. It, it doesn't try to use it as just a purely as a business thing because people here will tell you they, you can have some people tell you they basically invented acting and unless you study with them, you're never going to make it that kind of, that's a yeah. very broad brush stroke on it. But that's, that's a red flag to look out for anyone that says, you know, if you don't follow my, yeah, yeah, if you don't follow my seven steps, then you don't know how to act. And not, you know, no one invented acting. So, we, you know, we, we need to establish that. So, so, but there are some great, there are some amazingly great teachers here as well. And uh, I think the idea is that you look at it like a gym. Yeah. You know, you look at it like a gym. You're just going there to sharpen your tools. You're just keeping like, you know, um, and, I, and I found it difficult. I've done some, I've done workshops, mostly with Larry Moss. I, I found it hard to commit to. You're right. So Larry's been great. So I've done, a, I've done three of his workshops over the years and they're sort of short and sharp, but they're very intense. And he's all about, you know, his ethos is about the act of being of service to the writing. And that's what I love about him. It's not about you. It's about your job as an actor is to service the writing. People come to see the play or they come to, so your job, and as and if you're a writer sitting there watching, that's what you want. You know, yeah. so it's, especially over here as well, you know, it's, it, actors can fall into that trap of thinking it's about them. And and that's why I love Larry, because he teaches, you're, you're a worker amongst workers. <clears throat> and you're here to, to be of service to the play as the best you possibly can, and um and, and whatever tools you need or whatever skills you need to hone for that particular you know. And so that's I do love his workshops, but I do love the client. You know, I'm quite resistant to it now. Like it's funny you should bring it up because there's a class that's come up with a really great teacher. It's a six week course, and I'm like, uh, uh, I, I'm like I should do this, but. Do I really have it in me? It's just that stepping over the line. I mean, I felt that way when I first went to drama school. I was like, it was. I was so torn. I'm like, I think I should do this, but I really don't want. To. You know, a big part of me is like, run away, run away. But yeah. once you step over the line and get the ball rolling, and you get into the work, you remember why you wanted to do it in the first place. You know. Oh, I know. Yeah, it can feel so terrifying, especially yeah, yeah, having to do a bit of work and stuff like that. You know, I can remember going back. Because it took me a while to think, oh, I, I want to go to class. I want to continue learning. And mm. it felt so exposing and terrifying. Mm. Mm. I only mm. did one year of drama school when I was 17 and then was straight into a show. And so sort of did all of my learning within that environment, which yeah. was an amazing training ground in itself. Totally. It didn't feel like there was much room for mistake or to really, mm. you know, fail. And, you know, you know it was like... Mm. So going into a room was terrifying, but now I I I do try and go as mu as often as I can, and and I do love it. I right. love it because I feel like I'm earning my stripes, you know, and feel like I'm. Sort yeah, and you also get to work on depending on who the teacher is, and you also get to work on writing that you might not otherwise get to work on. Yes, you get to work with amazing writing, and and often some of the work people do in classes just like broadway level you know like sometimes it's incredible sometimes you fall flat in your face and that's that's what it's for and, and i i think that it's interesting watching people in class sometimes when they get stopped by the teacher and given a note and 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 the way that the actor reacts in that moment is a real shows where they're at what why they're there because if you stop and and you, you know you want to be in a place of thank you to the teacher not I was killing it. You know what I mean? So the yeah. whole point of going is to get better, right? Yeah. So that's yeah. that. And it's a very common thing to see actors get tense up and, 
you know, not be able to, you know, just breathe and take them. That's why, that's why we go to class to, to, mm-hmm. to, to get better and learn and, and take on the notes and listen. Even if you don't agree with a note, give it a shot. It's a, an yeah. ex- ex- experiment. You know what I mean? You just got to play, haven't you? You've got, you've got to that's play. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, what was I just about to ask you? Oh my God, my next question was, um, I just had to tell, oh, your process. Let's talk about your process. Do you have a process? Is there a particular thing that you go through when you get your script, whether it's for an audition? I mean, auditioning and self-taping is a completely different ball game to when you're about to go into a job. So yeah. what, what's your process from the arrival of a script when you're about to start a job? Yeah, it's, um, by the way, do you, do, I had an audition yesterday that was 12 pages that I got overnight. Do you guys get that kind of timeline over there? Um to be honest, I would say you, on average, it would be three to four days, but it yeah, can yeah. be the day before. But it's, I don't know right. how they expect you to do your best work overnight. And to- it's a strange one because it didn't happen in Australia. And for the first few years, I was, I get so anxious when I got a script the night yeah. before, especially as an Australian trying to iron out the accent. But, um, but um, to go back to your initial question, yeah, it's, it's, so the, the, it's always, the scripts like just reading like you know the first thing is to read it and read it again just keep reading it and reading it and let it soak in and then start to get you know tr- try to get themes for the uh, the overbroad brushstrokes theme themes of the whole piece you know uh and and um and then just start to look at you know your character's journey overall and obviously the things like what they want and what they, and then breaking it down to individual scenes what do they want in each individual scene and and then how the all the relationships and what you know, one of the first things I was ever taught was what does any other character say about your character? Write all of those things down, you know, and really just try and get the whole. One of the, one of the best things I, I learned, you know, and I love it, like with our thing, our, 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 our thing we did together was a three-hander and it's the relationships that really support you as an actor. When you feel like you're on your own, you know, it can get a little scary, but you look, the relationships that I have with you, our relationship, our character and with, that, that supports me in the scene so much. It's such a great net. It's a safety net. That yeah. So looking, really kind of fleshing out the... the, the um, and then I will do that thing of a backstory always. I'll always try and go into a backstory. And, and, different, and different actors will... I know that, you know, there are some actors I know that will write a novel. We'll, we'll write a novel, you know. And, and I, I'm like, whatever work, you know, and there's... There's definitely no rules, but there's you can't possibly say I did too much work on it. Mm. There, there is no, you know, like and and, and you know, it, it's such an interesting, it's such an interesting because you can walk onto a set being cast the day before. I got yeah. I got a I got a job here where I was it was like an acting emergency. This is very typical here where things can move, <coughs> and they um, it was a show that lost an actor because she was a recur a recurring, but. She'd taken a film and they didn't know. And it was a major network. So I got a script. They had to rewrite it. I got a script the day before and started on the show the next day and had a mo- like monologues. The next day, yeah. it was terrifying. Um, and I just went, okay, I can't possibly do the work I would normally do on this character. I just don't have the time. I'm going to have to do it as I go. And so, I, you know, I just, you just I had to find a few simple points of what is the character doing in this scene and then start to build it slowly from there. That was mm. a really interesting experience because I ended up doing two years on that show. Mm. It was only supposed to be a couple of episodes. What show so was that? It, Station 19. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's, a, it's a Grey's Anatomy spinoff. Yeah. Um, but um, so, yeah, but, but of course, in a perfect world and certainly with theatre, you know, you want as much time with the script as possible. You want to really let it percolate, but come at it from all those different angles. But, but particularly the journey and how it relates to the story overall, you know, mm-hmm. the themes. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it does make complete sense. Have you got the audition today then for the 12 pages? Oh, I had it yesterday. I did the audition yesterday. And how did that go? Oh, it was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we do this to ourselves? No, I know. I, you know, I have this thing too where I cram. I don't like to read off the page. Again, part of it's to do with the accent. I need to work on the accent, so I just need to it learn it. Awesome sense yeah go on sorry yeah and so so i'm actually pretty good at learning lines it's funny like that you know it's, you know it's such a cliche silly thing but people are who are non-actors well i can't believe you can remember memorizing lines doesn't as i've found out that doesn't necessarily make it doesn't make you a great actor it's more of a 
brain training thing. You know, it's got nothing to really. But I am good at learning lines relatively quickly. But um, mm-hmm. but yeah, it, it, yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to be doing that job, which is a shame. But uh, that's okay. Are you just telling yourself that? No, no, I'm pretty sure it was a very quick turnaround. So really? I think I would have. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But Isn't that's all right. Hard? That's how it goes. We do put ourselves through a lot, don't we? And our well, mental, the rejection and yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. how do you deal with all of that, Brett? I've definitely gotten better at it, um, and it's and it, it ebbs and flows, and it goes in waves, and it's it's definitely a numbers game. You have to really, you know, expect, I, I don't know if you've found this, but since COVID, there's a lot less feedback as well. There mm. used to be more communication. And when you feel like you're doing an audition that's a grain of sand and you're tossing into the ocean and there's just no wave made at all, it can get really frustrating. But the best thing to do is have a community, say talking to other actors and understand that you're not the only one that goes through it. Like and I that am. it is I'm pro. That's what we <clears throat> exactly. <laughs> and it's all part of the deal. It is very much and especially when you're sort of coming up, it's such a numbers game. Like all of the stars have to align. There are so many different things that have to kind of align for, for, for it to work. You know, there has to be a, a genuine opening. They haven't made an offer to somebody else. You are the right heart. You are, you, we, we know all that stuff. So for me, it's just kind of trusting that things go in waves. And that's mm-hmm. my experience. Like it was really scary early on. I was worse at it. I remember missing out on a couple of jobs and thinking that I, I couldn't possibly go on. <laughs> like full melodrama. You know, missing yeah. out, being on hold, or you know, I've got. There's been twice where I've been cast in something and then been recast before it's even shot. Gosh. Like somebody, somebody at the studio. I haven't had the experience of shooting and then being replaced. That happens out here quite a bit. That's, That's like an actor's worst nightmare. But I have had the experience of being cast in two relatively big shows and then being recast by someone at the network before it even before we'd even gone into production. Yeah. Do they give you? Oh, reasons? they've just decided. They've looked at it and gone. Oh, I think this, or I think actually, it's three times I can think that, that that's happened over my career. One mm-hmm. early on that was devastating to me, and in mm-hmm. hindsight, it just wasn't a big deal. Mm-hmm. And uh, two others that also weren't a big deal in the end. It was a big pilot that didn't end up going. And so it just. It, but it's someone at the network. So there's such a, especially with television. If it's a film, it's a whole different thing. But with television, there are so many different. This is why you can't get down on yourself because there are so many different people, different opinions mm. and clashing and you know there. And so it just takes one person to go, oh, I think he's just a bit too old or he's a bit too young. Mm. Or, you know, I, I just worked with this guy and he's really, well, whatever, you know. And so, and, and that's the problem with being an actor in television and film that you are, you, you, you know, you control, you don't have a lot of control in it. And that's why making your own stuff can be, can be really vital and, and if you can do it and, and you've got the motivation to do it, I couldn't encourage that anymore because that's the way, that's really the get together with friends, put a play on, you know, write your own stuff, do short films. It's it's the best thing you could possibly do, I think, for your own have mental you, health. Have you stepped into that world of creating a show or having ideas, writing? You said earlier on that writing was something you were interested in. Is that something that you're toying with or have toyed with? In your yeah, definitely. Yeah, I've, I've 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 done a couple of short films, and I've got a got a script that I've written, and uh, it, it all sort of went a little bit kind of on hold during COVID. But definitely, um, but you know, the actors that I admire the most of all, you know, they all produce and they all write and they all do. You know, yet you, you kind of you sort of have to just to to have some control over your own career and 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 life because it is it's such a it's an it's a, it's an unforgiving. A business and it doesn't give you back what you put in all the time you know mm-hmm. you put in a lot of work you get a little bit back you put in a lot more than what you get back generally speaking and that's just you just got to know that that's what you're getting into and then you've got to remind yourself of why you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and, and the reason the reason for me is because the bank didn't work out so you know. <laughs> it's all about the bank baby it's all about the bank, all about the bank. i was thinking about you because i was watching shantaram oh I'm yeah very excited about because I read the book years ago. <clears throat> right. And Charlie, is it Herman? Is that Hunnam? how I say Hunnam? Hunnam, Charlie not, Yeah, yeah. Hunnam. And and uh, and his, I he might be a friend of yours. I have no idea. But we're talking about accents and things like that. Yes, <laughs> so, yes. 
And yes, have you seen a tough one, isn't it? Oof. No, I've seen bits of it, and I know the accent's a little, you know. But that's, yes. I mean, God, do you know? Uh, oh no, I'll come back to that. I've got a funny story. I did an English accent once on television that was probably have to be in the top five worst accents. Yeah, I think I know you want to give me your English accent. I told you about this. I told you about this. Didn't yeah, I? yeah. Tell us. Tell <laughs> us. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you again. I'm not going to tell you again because I don't need anybody else looking it up. But okay. Lots of other people, yeah, exactly. Oh, so bad. Anyway, I uh, Charlie. Yeah, I know. It's 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 a tough one because you, I was talking to this last night with a mate who's who's okay. you know, one of these favorite books. He's watching and he's a little bit. And it's tough because um, you know, he physically he fits the role. I remember you know I've seen that photo. So he physically fits the role. He's Charlie Hunnam's a big star. But like, he has a lot of people. You know, I, I get why they would cast him. It's a tricky accent to pull off. So you do think, why did they just not cast an Australian? Yes. Um, but as an Australian who's working as an American all the time, I, yeah. I haven't really got a leg to, to stand on as far as judgment goes, you know. But yeah. I do wonder if they offered it to someone like Joel Edgerton or if they offered it to someone, you know, and, and mm -hmm. they knocked it back or, or not. But um, it's just it's just when it's a tough accent to pull off. And, mm -hmm. and, and, it's, and so it does... I think, you know, ultimately it does affect people's experience of the show. I know, it or maybe does. they're think yeah. And maybe they're thinking about the American market and a lot of Americans don't pick up so much mm. on accents as much as as, as we do. Mm. Maybe it's that I don't I don't I, although although the, you know, they're coming way, far more savvy with the world waiters now and streaming. But yeah, I don't know. It's a it, it's a really tough call. I mean you know, good on him for having a crack. It's a tough one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's But it has had an effect on how I... And then I've tried to yeah. sort of... Reasons in my head, like maybe his... Because it's such a weird combination. Maybe the parents were American or there's some British... Right. You know, it's like for reasons why right. it might be... Me, or he was hanging out with some Americans in jail. Oh, or, so you're trying to justify his backstory so you can deal I with really the show. Was. I really yeah, was. Yeah, that's great. Good on you. I love um, that. So with uh, just a couple of last questions, because um, we're at 30, 10 minutes. Um, with your American accent and being in LA, yes. do you go into a room with your American accent? Is it something that you hold up all of the time? Because I've got some British friends that are in big American shows and, and they're talking like as themselves on Insta and they mm. stay in American all the time. Mm. Yeah, it's what really interesting. And that's, that's recently. It's really a mixed bag and it's up to the individual. It is tricky though, I can tell you. If I go into an audition, I'm American as I walk in. Oh, you yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then at the end of it, I'll snap out of it. Mm. Um, on set early on when I was first here, it was really tricky because it becomes more of a big deal for the other people around you. <clears throat> and once they – and it's, I find it very difficult to maintain it between scenes and I feel like I'm being inauthentic, which is just my own yeah. thing. <clears throat> but it is difficult because I remember one of the first jobs – this happened several times. It happened on Station 19. I went on. It, it was. I did a early on when I first got here. I did a guest on um, NCIS. One of the, and 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 I was went in American. I was talking American. And then at lunch, I just dropped out of it, and it freaked people out. Yeah. So we go back on set, and now they're doing these ones. They're like, huh? And now it's becoming this whole thing. And now they're listening for it. And now, and you know, and now it's affecting my. So it's a really tricky thing to do. Um, if you can, if you've got the energy to maintain the American while you're on set, then it's probably, it probably is going to help you. But look, I know actors that just snap in and out of it as well. But, but I, I do think, you know, I, I know there's a couple of, you know, Australian actors have done really well that, you know, chose to lose their Australian accent full time. And now when they go back to Australia, they have to get an Australian accent coach. And mm -hmm. it's worked for them because, you know, you, their, their accent's excellent. So it's a, it's a tricky one. Like, and, and, and for mine, accents work like on a percentage basis. Like I know like Damien Lewis is a, a great example. He's at American accents, like 99%, you know, and, um, and, and Matthew Reese from the Americans who's Welsh, like his accents are so great mm -hmm. and he snaps in and out. He's got a thick Welsh accent, beautiful Welsh accent, mm -hmm. and he snaps in and out of it. I mean, I, and, um, and so it depends where you're at with it. For me, I do need to keep working on it. And, and, mm. and if you can get away with 80% on a show, the Americans are never going to pick it up because there are so many different American accents. Mm. Otherwise, these are going to go, oh, I heard you. I heard a word there, you know. For me, if it gets below 70, 60%, you're going to, everyone's going to hear it. When you're but doing you're your, gonna... sorry, <clears throat> when you do your ident on the self tapes and all that, American, if yes. it's for American. Irish. 
No, no, I do American. Yeah. <laughs> and can you do Irish? You know, I just had to do an. I, no, <laughs> I, I mean, I have, I have, I did just did an audition for a show that's shooting in Britain for an Irish character, and I and I didn't actually do it at first. I said, why would I? Why? Of course, they're going to just cast someone Irish. Why would you? No, why are you casting a bit? And all of my Australian friends here were going in for this thing that's been cast, shot in Britain, and, and an Irish character is a talk show host in the in the seventies. Uh, awesome. But I I gave it a crack. I did a Brendan Bean play once called The Hostage uh, years ago, and I worked so hard on my on my Irish accent, the Dublin accent, and um, I think it was okay back then. But no, I. Mm-hmm. I don't think it would be fair to anyone for me to bust out an Irish accent. I want you to come over here and shoot, Brett. Then I get to see you. There you go. There you go. Me too. That'd be lovely. See you and Phoebe be back together. That'd be so nice. Yeah. Okay. One yeah. final um, question. What is the best note you've ever had? If oh, you can gosh. remember. The best note I've ever had. Oh, my so God. That's that's really... like stuck in your brain. Mm, you know, it's going to come to me after we get off. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> um, don't think of it now. Please don't worry. I should Maybe I should have pre-warned you. No, I think, honestly, I think the best note is what I was saying early on. I really think this is really important for actors' mental health. And I think I, I think especially, well, anywhere in Australia, the, the best thing is what I said earlier, which was it's not about you. Mm. Make it about, it's about the other actor in front of you. It's about the writer. When, you know, a writer writes this thing, then, you, you know, you, he gets to see his words come through. You are the conduit that their writers, his or her writing can come through. And so keep the sting off yourself. It's not about you being, people come to see the play. People want to hear the, so I just think try to be of service, you know, and that's what I loved about Larry Moss. The more you can put yourself in that mental state of I get to be of service. Brian Cranston, you probably, a lot of actors would have seen that thing. He's got a little talk where the defining moment in his career, just for auditions, was when he realized, oh, I get to be of service to this writing today in the audition. I get to, I get to do this and do the work. And then that's, that, that in itself is satisfying enough. Yes. And that's when his career really shifted. So it's a little bit of a paradox in that sense. You know, but I think the more you can have that, and that's why theatre is so great because you feel like you're part of a community and you're being, of, you know, and that's where acting came from in ancient Greece. Now, that's, they were mm. genuinely of service. That's what acting was about. Mm. So that's that's the best note I've, I've ever been given and, and it really came from Larry Moss more than anyone. That's a good one. His book, I mean, I yeah. rave about his book. Is it The, in, mm. the, Intent, uh, the Intent to Live? That's yeah, it's a great book, isn't it? Yeah, Great book. I bang yeah, on about yeah. it all the time on this um on this platform. So if you haven't read it, get read. Um, yeah. Brett, amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you for being of service to me today. And to oh, I yeah, am, no worries. It's Thanks so kind me. of you to give me your time and it's been absolutely gorgeous seeing you. And if you're going to be yeah. in the UK anytime soon, then you make sure you hit me up, baby. Oh, I will. I will. 100%. Thank okay. you. Have a great day. Thanks. All right. Bye. Bye.